So, uh, hello again, and uh, this will be some demonstration part, some short demonstration part uh, for the uh, uh, QPSK modulation type, quadrature phase shift keying modulation type with Rayleigh fading channel, how it affects uh, received signal points, how it affects impulse response, and so forth. Some simulation to show dynamically changing plots. Uh, from existing MATLAB code. So all you have to do is just to open web page, copy some pieces, read description, and maybe, you know, try yourself some changes in the code. So as for the trellis coded modulation constellation for trellis coded modulation, uh, sorry, modulation, which will also be a topic in our course later, and we'll have also our own simulation of this process. For quadrature amplitude shift gaining uh, with 16 signals, this should look like this constellation. Yes, uh, so um, you can observe and see probably currently no particular, uh, how to say it, uh, law in assigning this symbols and uh, usually we use gray coding and find it to be one of the most efficient ways of assigning to avoid multiple errors if we have symbol error. For example, consider a situation that we eventually send this symbol, but because of the problems in channel, which can be noise, inter symbol interference and much else other things, we have received this signal. So. This was symbol 16, and this is symbol 14, for example, no, 15, for example. Yes, if we number them starting from symbol 1 and accordingly go like this, yes. So, uh, this is one symbol error, symbol error, yes. So, how many bits will actually be suffering because of that error? So, we see that we have mismatching bits 1, 2, three, and only last bit is the same. So basically this will re produce three bit errors from one symbol error, which is not so good. Yes, which is actually bad, we can even say. Uh, but uh, if we would use gray coding, we would have only one bit error. However, you need to know here that this constellation itself is coded. So that means that we have error protection code in these symbols. And this is much stronger effect than just the distance of one bit. In fact, one of the least protected points in this constellation here is in this distance. And that is exactly when we try and use one bit difference. Here you can see this is un last bit is unprotected bit. So this is where we do not have any coding. And these three bits are actually protected with uh, convolutional code. And even if those errors can happen, they will be corrected. Yes, so usually, usually what we do is we use code and then we use modulator. Yes, that's how we usually do separate these blocks by layer function. However, dress trellis coded modulation merges them together. Because as you can see here, uh, the coding is done for the part of modulator. So this table of modulation is already coded, yes? And we have to decode uh, this data later on. And actually, uh, this merging, this effect provides a so-called synergy, meaning that the improvement of error probability, if we use coding and modulation alone, is not so good as in this case if we use TCM. So TCM actually provides a better improvement of error probability using the same code, the same modulation type as here would be used separately. But uh, in coding this constellation, we can actually get better results. 
So that's the idea of Trellis coded modulation that will be explained later on. So that's why you might have difficulty seeing the logic in assignment. But actually, if you check any pair of the of these points, you will notice that we have always last bit different. Yes, so same goes here. Last bit is the only one that is different. Yes, all the other three bits are equal. So whichever pair you would choose, the, the principle will remain. Yes, so that's the least protected bit, actually. The other bits are under much better protection because we use coding, but last bit is not coded. So that is for um, trellis coded modulation, and we will return to that eventually later at the end of this course. Yes, so as for the multipath fading channel, here you can see in Ortus uh, link and the code already, so you don't even have to copy by, by hand these pieces of code just to see how it works. I have also actually copied all the commands, yes, so basically this shows how Rayleigh and Racy and multipath fading channels work, some parameters, Doppler shift specified, yes, sampling rate and so forth. Well, actually maybe maybe next week we'll start with better explaining step by step this course, but today I believe we are all already too tired to uh, understand it, yes. So the idea quite simple here. Here we make two channels, relay channel with specific parameters, yes, and Rayseyan channel for specific parameters. Also, please note that for Rayseyan channel, we have specified ratio of power, uh, well, direct line signal power related to reflected signal power, well, other parts, yes. So basically that means that direct line of sight signal is 10 times stronger than any other signals, yes. So after that we make modulator. So basically we don't even have to program it ourselves, we just specify object, then we send data, well generate message data first of all, and just perform modulation with that data. That's basically all, yes. If you remember our last previous practical access, then we try to make modulation, demodulation ourselves, calculate something, but here we can use objects. Unfortunately, Octo doesn't support these toolboxes. It doesn't have anything similar. Maybe, maybe the best thing we can use as an alternative would be Python. I didn't look into this yet, but I assume that it could be possible there. Then we have some visualization to show the channel, how it's performing, uh, to show Mm. It is changing in time, yes, so basically we have 20 frames of data and after each frame we pass our figure for 100 milliseconds just to see how it changes in time. So uh, then we visualize Doppler spectrum and finally we visualize impulse response and frequency response of our channel. and. At the end, we also visualize some, some, some constellation, yes, constellation diagram. So this is constellation diagram. So as I said, we are using uh, quadrature phase shift keying, yes, with four constellation signals. And uh, here you can already see the, w how did uh, those signals look like. So if we use normal white Gaussian noise channel, what we are expecting to see is some small clouds, well, small or not so small, depending on signal to noise power ratio, right? But uh, in this particular case, you can clearly see that these clouds somehow changed their shape. They were stretched and rotated, yes. So basically that is one of the problems happening because of this uh, intersymbol interference. So let us run this entire script and see all the diagrams uh, occurring in the process. So you can easily repeat this yourself. Uh, currently I believe what we will be looking at is uh, so uh, Relay channel. 
Yes. But you can always replace Ray Chan with Rice Chan and accordingly get results for Rice and Channel. Yes. So let us run the script and see what happens. So first of all, we can see impulse response of our channel. As you can see here, we have direct line signal and multipath components and amplitude of which component changes in time. This actually changes the frequency response. So this is normal one level, meaning that signal doesn't change. And as you can see, it quite often goes below this level and significantly and sometimes it goes even above. So that is constructive amplification of signal and other, otherwise destructive. And sometimes it gets as low as minus 30 decibel. So this is Doppler spectrum. Uh, so theoretic, theoretically calculated frequency shift and um, practically similar. And here you can see that actually those clouds of received signal do not also are also not static they change and it's quite difficult to understand which point belongs to where without equalizers yes so and it turns out that equalizer also needs to change in time yes because the only way to collect the corresponding points in their areas is to use equalizer yes and then after using equalizers all these moving pictures will be concentrated around their corresponding uh, centers of how we can also yes so we, here you can clearly see that actually it's nowhere near that what we want to see yes because of this intersimple interference and changes in time so no, not only it doesn't represent this picture as we want it also is unstable yes it's changing in time constantly here you can also see the frequency response of the channels. So blue line is Rysian channel. Yes, uh, yellow line is Rayleigh channel. Clearly, the Rayleigh channel is not so um, suffering from this intersymbol interference. And actually, I want to see this to change this visualization to uh, Rysian channel, yes, so Rice Chan, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to, ah, wait a minute, but do I have two bits per frame, QPSK mode? Ah, here, yes, we have this rice and channel already calculated, so we only need to change where it is vis 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 visualized. Yes, so basically we replace here, here. Now we also do it here. Uh, I just don't want to change everything automatically, just to be sure. Okay. And then, ah, it's already rising channel here. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This. This was, in fact, uh, plotting both of them, yes. Now, signal constellation, also, we want to use Raytheon channel. And then we'll see this demonstration once again, how it will work with Raytheon channel, which has strong direct line uh, side component. Hopefully it will work. We don't have any errors or stuff like that. So here you can see that for the most cases, this component for zero is usually stronger than any others. Yes, so it's one of the strongest components. And for that reason, these fades still can happen quite deep, but uh, generally speaking, it doesn't look like it's that bad as it was for Rayleigh channel. Again, Maybe I needed to change some additional parameters, 
I don't really know maybe uh, the variants of these values, but Overall, the principle is the same. What I'm interested in the most right now is to see the constellation. How will it change? Yes, you can see clearly that this constellation is now looking completely different. There, there are no longer those strange shapes. Yes, more or less we have this like a circle. So yes, this channel be behaves slightly different. And it's also <laughs> still not clear where we have these regions and if we would try and detect them as they are of course we would get a lot a lot of errors so so yes uh, we need an equalizer to fix this problem and eventually after a few lectures and practical exercise we are going to see this problem fixed by our own eyes and our own software. Yes, so what we are going to do here is to add the equalizer to the very same script right now and to see the picture that situation improves. Yes, so that's our plan for future lectures, for future practical exercises. Now, I don't understand why so many channels here. Something probably I did change too much, <laughs> but okay. So, are there any questions? I will try and upload today all the materials. I'm now having much more time to do that. So if there are no questions, thank you for attention. Thank you for uh, patience for today's quite complicated topic. And I understand that it was also a little bit more difficult for me to use existing lectures, but sadly I had so so not, not much not so much time this month had to resort to using existing presentations and hopefully in the future the presentations will be more uh, how to say it well organized yes okay thank you then and see you next week next week everything should happen as planned and uh, we'll still meet in teams uh, thank you and goodbye thank you professor